Thanks, Jen. Uh, hi, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here. I'd like to give you an update on the work we've done as part of the Biden-Harris Supply Chain Task Force. But first, I'd like to give you a quick look back at how we got here. The President saw early on how the pandemic was putting our supply chains to the test. In February, he issued an executive order requiring agencies to produce reports identifying challenges in our supply chains for a set of critical products and for a set of critical industries. When the first reports were released in June, he created a supply chain disruptions task force at the cabinet level to use every government lever to address the near-term disruptions related to the pandemic. One area he asked the task force to focus on was ports and trucking. In July, Secretary Buttigieg convened all of the key players from the goods movement supply chain, ports, labor, trucking, businesses, and more. In August, I joined the effort to serve as an honest broker who could help move everyone from finger pointing towards taking action. By October, the President brought together the nation's largest retailers, ports, and labor and earned commitments from all to move toward a 24-7 supply chain system. We also worked with the ports to propose fees on ocean carriers that were leaving import containers at the ports in Los Angeles and Long Beach for too long. This fee has helped lead to a 40% reduction in long dwelling containers at those two ports. We worked with the Georgia Ports Authority to provide flexibility to fund $7, billion, $7 million of pop-up inland ports to alleviate congestion at the Port of Savannah. These pop-up ports started operating in December. The Port of Savannah has also seen a drop in long dwelling containers and ships at anchor outside its port. And there have been several steps we've taken in between to help get empty containers removed, to generate commitments from leading retailers to move their cargo during off-peak hours, and working with the state of California to support infrastructure projects. There are still challenges, and Omicron could surface more, which we're closely tracking. When bottlenecks emerge in the global supply chain, it can take more time for goods to reach store shelves, which can lead to price increases. That's why the President has taken such aggressive action to alleviate these blockages, and we've seen significant progress. First, we were able to sustain a record-breaking holiday shopping season. As you can see, our preferred measure of goods on shelves, inflation-adjusted retail inventories without autos, rose 0.5 percent at the end of November compared to the end of October to not only exceed pre-pandemic levels, but also hit the highest monthly level recorded since 1992. Consumers also received 97 to 99 percent of their packages on time or with minimal delays from the U.S. Postal Service, FedEx, and UPS. Second, as we begin the new year, the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach announce a new fee on long-dwelling empty containers, building on the success of the fee imposed on long-dwelling Im import containers in November. This should help further unclog our ports. Third, we're ramping up efforts to ensure U.S. exporters are treated fairly. The Port of Oakland, for example, announced new actions to improve U.S. exports, particularly agricultural exports. Fourth, we're monitoring potential Omicron-related disruptions at ports overseas and at home while working to prioritize the movement of medical supplies at the nation's ports, working closely with the Biden-Harris COVID response team. The impact of the Omicron variant may continue to unfold and will remain focused on report supporting the public health response, building on our progress to help ease bottlenecks in critical supply chains and ensuring consumers have the goods they need. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.